Halal. Hello, I'm back today with a continuation of my declutter series. I took a break for a little bit there, but we're gonna hop back into it today. I asked you guys on my community page what you think I should declutter next, and the consensus was foundation. So that is what we're gonna do today. I'm very excited about it, although I'm kind of kicking myself because throughout the years, I've decluttered foundations sporadically here and there whenever I felt like it, and I feel like I would have had a much bigger pile had I not thrown stuff away throughout the years, and I just everything like I do everything else. I still think we're gonna have a substantial pile and I'm looking to declutter, I don't know, 35 to 40% of what I own. Thinking about it now, I can already envision a handful of foundations that I don't use anymore that I know I'm for sure gonna toss. So I have a good feeling about this declutter. I think it's gonna be very successful. I still have so many declutters to do. So if you guys enjoy these videos, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think I should do next. I still have lip liners, eyeliners, mascara, eyeshadow, concealers, powders, glitters, pigments. Oh my God, hearing myself say that out loud makes me feel like I haven't even made a dent in these declutters. I think I need to do them more often because I really need to reorganize my makeup collection. After I do the declutters, I'm going to do a video on how I plan to store my makeup so that I don't forget about it because I feel like a reoccurring theme in all of these declutters has been, oh, I forgot that I own this because I put it in my makeup closet where things go to die. So I'm trying to change my ways. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed. And let's get into it. Alrighty, so here is what we're working with. These are all of my foundations for personal use. I've also got some Lysol wipes and some paper towels handy. Some of these bottles are just gross. Um, these caps and the pumps look atrocious. I figure while I'm decluttering, I may as well clean some of the bottles of the foundations that I'm gonna keep so I can bear to look at them. So yeah, this is what we've got going on. And unlike my previous videos where I lay out all of my products on my rug, I think I'm gonna skip that this time because some of these bottles are a mess. I've got foundation on some of my tubes and I just don't wanna risk messing up my white rug. So we're gonna be working from this plastic Ikea organizer. Let me just set my camera up. I think I'm also gonna take some paper towel and lay it out on my floor here for the products that I will not be keeping. Let's get this show on the road. We are gonna start out with the L'Oreal Visible Lift Blur Foundation in Nude Beige. It has OptiBlur technology, which tells me that it might have a blurring primer built into it. Instantly blurs the look of lines, spots, and uneven texture for younger looking skin. I did like this. I have a feeling it's old. I'm gonna give this a little sniff here. Yeah, it does smell a bit old, so I'm gonna toss it. Do they still make this? I don't know, but what I do know is that I'm gonna say, do they still make this? I don't know if they still make this in this video multiple times. Future me editing this is gonna be really tempted to put a counter on the screen of how many times I say that. Next up, I've got the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Glow Shears Illuminating Tinted Moisturizer with an SPF of 30. This is in the shade light to medium 30. I used to live in this tinted moisturizer. I think I repurchased it, I wanna say maybe 10 times in my life because I loved it so much. Before I started YouTube, I hardly ever wore a full coverage foundation because I was a huge gym rat. I had great skin, so I never really needed high coverage. This is an amazing tinted moisturizer. I wish it came in more shades. I'm pretty sure they still make this. Something tells me this is very expired and the SPF in it wouldn't even work anymore. Let me just give it a quick little sniff. I mean, it smells like sunscreen, but I know that it's old and that I should toss it. It doesn't give a lot of coverage. It just kind of gives like an evenness to the skin. It helps that it has an SPF 30, but but I'm gonna get rid of it just because it's old. I would repurchase this though. This here is the Cover FX Natural FX Water-Based Foundation with SPF 15 in the shade E0. I believe it's their lightest shade in this range. I used to love this. I actually used it as a concealer. It's ancient, dates back to the days where I worked in retail, which seems like a lifetime ago, so I am gonna toss it, but I'm pretty sure they have reformulated and repackaged this foundation. Cover FX foundations are some of the best on the market, and I feel like they're very 
underrated. This is my little reminder to repurchase this in the future. Oh my God, this is so old. This is the L'Oreal Feel Natural Multivitamin Complex Foundation with SPF 15. Dude, this is the foundation that I wore in high school. Little Irina in grade 12 rocked this foundation. This was one of the greatest foundations ever at the drugstore. And I think I repurchased this when they were discontinuing them because I wanted to keep it as a memory. I was so sad when they discontinued this because it had great coverage, it was hydrating, it had a little bit of SPF in it, it blended into the skin seamlessly. At the time, I was fake and baking, so this was like the perfect shade for me. Natural beige, oh my god, I feel so sad. I don't wanna let this go because of the memories. You guys remember this foundation? Did anybody else wear this? This was like my gateway drug, the foundation. Oh, I'm so sad. Tossing it is the right thing to do, and now I have this on camera if I ever wanna look back on it, you know? I've got not one, but two of the the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundations, True Ivory, and True Beige. These were Cake City on my face back in the day. I look back on it now, and this is what the top looks like. I don't really know what I was thinking with some of my foundation choices. I used to buy the driest, most cakey, most high coverage foundations. I still really love high coverage, but I could do without the cakiness and the drying of my skin, which is very hard to do because I'm so oily. I think I wanted to love these because they were affordable and because because, I don't know, YouTube made me think that I should like them. I don't think I use these more than two or three times and they've been rotting in my collection since, so it's time to say goodbye to these. I've got two of the NYX Total Control Drop Foundations in vanilla and natural. These are very fluid. They're like a liquid foundation. They come with a little dropper and they're marketed as sheer to full coverage. I would say they're sheer to medium. I don't think you can get a completely full coverage look with these unless you mix them in with a thicker foundation, which kind of defeats the purpose. I like to use these on the days where I'm not looking for a full face of makeup and I'm just trying to cancel out a bit of the redness in my face. I think that when I apply too much of this foundation, it accentuates my pores and my fine lines and the dryness in my face. I don't think I would recommend this for anybody that has dry skin because these do dry matte. They're very soft. I'm having a hard time describing these because I don't reach for them all that often unless I am just rushing out the door and I need a little bit of coverage. I am gonna keep them, I think. Vanilla is great when I am fair because it's one of the only foundations that is fair enough for me that has a yellow undertone. I'm pale, I have a lot of redness in my face, but I have a yellow undertone. So it's very hard for me to find fair foundations that have a yellow undertone that do a good job of covering the redness in my face. Vanilla is great, so I'm gonna keep this one. I don't know if I should keep natural, but I think I will because I can mix it in with something else. This isn't that old and I'd feel bad throwing it out, so you've lived to see another day. This is the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Liquid foundation. It's oil-free. It's water-based. This is in the shade Nude. I remember really liking this. I wouldn't say that it is full coverage. It is very lightweight. It's nice. I love the Stay Matte But Not Flat powder, which is why I picked up this foundation. That being said, I'm gonna give this a sniff test because I have a feeling it's super old. Yeah, it kind of smells like Play-Doh. That's what the top looks like. So I think, unfortunately, we are past the 12-month mark on this, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Next up is the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Fresh Complexion Oil-Free Foundation foundation in 120 nude beige. This foundation is bomb. I have repurchased it several times. CoverGirl is now cruelty free, which is very exciting. I had kind of pumped the brakes on repurchasing this for a little bit there because I was trying to be more conscious with my shopping decisions at the drugstore and try to purchase mostly cruelty free products. But now that they're cruelty free, I can repurchase this until I go red in the face. So I'm going to keep this. I think it's great. I'm almost out of it too. This is the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Full Coverage foundation. I gotta wipe this one clean. This here is fair and it matches me when I'm super pale, but for some reason when I am super pale, my pores just look way more apparent when I'm wearing foundation, which is kind of a bummer and this accentuates my pores for sure. So I think I'm gonna try maybe wearing different primers with it. I also kind of want to pick up a deeper shade for when I am self tan. The jury is still out on this one, so for that reason I'm gonna keep it. I've got two of the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus foundations. I have 30 and 40. This has got to be one of my favorite 
favorite formulas that I've ever used. I've used this on myself as well as in my makeup kit on other people. It is just gorgeous. It's matte, but it's not drying. It doesn't accentuate dryness or pores or fine lines. It just leaves the most beautiful finish on the skin. I can't describe it. My only gripe with this is the componentry. The outside is very hard. That's what she said. So when you're down to your last little bit of foundation, you have to really squeeze the shit out of it to get it out, which is kind of frustrating. What I've done in the past is I've gotten so desperate that I've actually cut it in half and scraped the inside. I think they still make this. I would highly recommend it, especially if you have oily skin and you like high coverage, but you don't want your skin to look dry. So I'm gonna keep both of these. This is the Buxom Show Some Skin Weightless Foundation Light to Medium Coverage in the shade Dim the Light. I don't know who they think they are calling this a foundation. This is more of a tinted moisturizer, if you could even call it that. It blends into nothingness. Something that you would apply to the skin when you're on vacation, definitely wouldn't apply it if you're trying to cover any redness or any spots or anything. This is super old, so I'm gonna toss it. Ooh, this is a fossil in my collection. This is the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation. I don't know what shade this is. It pumps out of here. I love this when I purchased it years ago, but as I got older, I realized that I shouldn't wear a foundation that ages me five to ten years. I was all about full coverage, super drying foundations that leave zero oil on the face. As I've grown older, you know, my tastes have changed. I don't like that look anymore and I think this is way too thick for me and uh, it accentuates my pores and it's super old so I'm gonna toss this. Brings back great memories of when I first started my YouTube channel. This here is a mini MAC mixing medium. I used to use this when I had a uh, MAC face and body in my makeup kit. It would help me to lighten a foundation that was too dark for a client. I have tossed out my face and body. This is super old as well. I can't tell you the last time I used it, so it's gotta go. Next up, Lancome Tent Idole. This has an SPF of 15, 100 ivory neutral. This is an absolutely beautiful foundation, especially when I'm fair. Like I said earlier, it is very hard for me to find a foundation that doesn't accentuate my pores when and I'm fair. That next one, the can't stop, won't stop. Feel like that wanted to be this. I love this. I'm gonna keep it. It's great for when I'm pale. I need to clean the pump on this one as well. It has really nice coverage, but it's not cakey. It just leaves a really healthy glow to the skin which is much appreciated uh, when you're oily, but you want coverage, but you don't want to look too dry. This is the Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Light Beige. Medium to high coverage, feels really nice on the skin, wears beautifully throughout the day, doesn't accentuate things that you don't want accentuated. I went to Sephora and I accidentally picked up sand. Hmm, I think sand might actually match me pretty well the first couple days that I'm self tan because I self tan my face. I think maybe this one was a little bit light my face when I was self tanned. Why would I pick up sand? Like I knew, I knew that my shade was light beige. Well, either way, I'm gonna keep both of them. We have got some MAC. I've got two of the Studio Fix fluids, NC25 and NC20. These are so expired and I'm gonna get rid of them. I used to love these. I used to keep these in my kit. Super high coverage, cult favorites. Everybody and their mom has tried MAC Studio Fix, so I don't need to say too much about those. These here are MAC Studio Scar. I also have an SPF of 15. I had shades NC25. I don't know what shade this is, but these are a level up from Studio Fix. They're not as fluid. They're a lot thicker, higher coverage. And now they're expired, so I gotta toss them all, unfortunately. I think these bottles were pretty full, and I don't really buy from MAC anymore. I keep switching up the angle because I'm sitting with my legs crossed, and I've lost feeling in both of my legs. Moving on, this is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable. This has gotta be the most high coverage foundation I've ever used in my life. I'm talking like a pea size can do your entire face. You guys have probably seen videos on this. Some of you have probably used this yourself. It is crazy town. One thing I don't like about it is the applicator. What the hell is this ball? What am I supposed to do with this when I run out? It's gonna be such a pain getting in there and scraping out the last little bit of foundation because what's left in here could last me easily two to three weeks. So luckily I have like one of those makeup spatulas that I can use in there. I need to repurchase this. This is in the shade. Ivory, which is great for when I'm fair. And surprisingly, it doesn't accentuate all the things that I hate on my face. Next up, we've got my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundations and a backup sand, rattan. And this one here is a backup of sand. They don't normally come with pumps. They actually just come with a little cap like this. 
I got the pumps from MAC. I have been searching far and wide for any kind of dupe for the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Ideally, I'd love to find a cruelty-free dupe, but just nothing compares. Nothing! 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 If you guys have recommendations, please leave them in the comments. I would love to find a cruelty-free alternative for Double Wear, not only for myself, but for my professional makeup kit, because my clients absolutely love Double Wear. It looks beautiful on everybody. Everybody. It has saved me in so many situations. So if you guys have any dupes, let me know. And I'm not talking something that's slightly similar. I'm talking straight up dupes. Coverage, wear, and shade selections. Anyway, I'm gonna keep these. This is the Becca Ultimate Coverage 24 Hour Foundation in the shade Buff. I don't know why I put it back in the box. I have a thing for packaging and boxes. I will keep boxes from concealers, from foundations, from eyeshadow palettes. It's just a thing. This is not a brand new purchase. It's fairly recent, the end of last year, and I really liked it. For some reason, I stopped using it. I was using it every single day to work. This is so dirty. And then, I don't know, kind of fell out of love with it. That's a pretty common occurrence for me. I will love a foundation, and then, I don't know, the weather changes, my skin changes, and so does my opinion. I guess my skin is really moody, so I think I'm gonna give this another whirl. I did really like that it came with a pump. It's high coverage. It's lightweight and a little bit goes a long way. It's very hydrating. I don't know that I would recommend it to anybody with dry skin, but if you have oily skin, you may want to get a little sample from Sephora. If it wasn't clear, I'm going to keep this. Okay, on to this side. Uh, let's start on the left. The Maybelline Superstay Better Skin. This is in porcelain ivory, and it looks like it expired June of 2018, so I am going to toss it. I didn't really like this, and I gave it a fair shot. I mean, I used half of this bottle. I don't know what it is about fair foundations. They just accentuate the shit out of my pores. Maybe that was the issue. Just didn't really mesh well with my skin. This is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. I don't know what shade this is, but if I could name it something, it would be everything but my shade. This is so wrong on so many levels. I don't know what I was thinking when I picked this up. It's not something that would match me when I'm fair, and it's not something that would match me when I'm tanned. I think I was confused. Oh my god. This expired in April of 2015. I told you, I'm a hoarder. I'm gonna throw this out. I don't have much to say about it because I don't remember. Oh, here it is. It's in N1-2. I wish all products had the exact expiration date on the back, you know? Instead of having those little jars that say 6, 12, or 24 on them, it'd be nice to have the exact date. I know a lot of people love this. I just don't think it was for me, and I think it made me look greasy. I've got some Maybelline Fit Me Foundations. I think this is the original. Matte and Poreless and the original 110 210 and 120. These are what I would call YouTube made me buy it because it worked for everybody else. I don't know what it is about these Maybelline foundations that just don't mesh well with my skin. It was a very sad day when I had to accept that fact. I was especially heartbroken when it came to the matte and poreless because as a greasy girl with big pores, I wanted to be matte and poreless and it was not matte and poreless. So I'm gonna toss all three of these. I have talked about this Sonia Kashuk foundation in the past. This was her soft focus satin matte. This is the shade buff. She has since discontinued all of her makeup because she doesn't care about us and she only sells tools and bags now. Why she decided to just leave us high and dry like that, I don't know. I ask myself every time I go to Target because her makeup was really good and this foundation was amazing. I was just starting to fall so deeply in love with it and then I went to Target and I saw that everything was being discontinued and everything had been picked through so I couldn't find this anymore. This shade is way too deep for me for everyday use. I can get away with wearing this when I am self-tanned. Sometimes I mix it in with other foundations, but if for some reason you guys know where I can find leftovers of this, please let a girl know in the comments. I'm just very sad about this. Uh, I am gonna keep it though, but just know that I'm sad. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation. I wanted to love this so bad when I first picked it up because everybody and their mom on YouTube was talking about how great it was. Well, guess what? This is creamy vanilla. This was their lightest shade. Does that look even remotely light to you? And it oxidizes three shades deeper than this. Not only does it oxidize, it doesn't wear well. I ended up looking like a greasy mess after a few hours. Powder didn't help. Blotting did not help. It was 
just a disaster. Since I picked this up, I'm pretty sure they've extended their shade range, which is nice, but unless they've redone the formula as well, I don't think I'm gonna give this another shot. I'm gonna throw this out. Next up, I've got two of the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define foundations. These are amazing. I've got F1 and F7. The only complaint that I have is the applicator. Not because I think it's unsanitary, but because the applicator is so thick that it takes up a lot of room in the bottle that could be used towards giving us more product. I would prefer if this came with a pump, that would be great. But this foundation is insane. You can actually sheer it out and you can wear it, you know, on the days where you don't want completely full coverage, but you can build it up to a really nice full coverage that doesn't look cakey, doesn't accentuate pores or fine lines, or dryness or scars. It is just such an amazing formula. I like the way that it smells. I like to buff this into my face using a foundation brush, but I also think it looks really nice with a beauty blender. It actually builds to a super full coverage when you're using a damp beauty blender, so I would highly recommend this if you haven't tried it already. I also like the concealer version of this. The concealer with the foundation together, just match made in heaven. This is the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD High Definition Long Wearing illuminating foundation. This is just in the white shade. I use this as a mixer. These I think were supposed to be dupes for the Makeup Forever HD. I've actually never tried the foundation version of this. I just have the white. Uh, because I'm having a really hard time shade matching myself in the store. I don't think that their shade selection is all that good. I can't say too much about the other shades, but the mixer is pretty good, so I'm gonna keep it. I have three of the LA Girl Pro Matte High Definition Longwear Matte. I have a very love-hate relationship with this foundation. Um, what shades do we have? Beige, medium beige, and ivory. Ivory is my more recent purchase, and I just want you to look at the bottle. You see how it's got spots of white? It wasn't mixed properly. And I lost my Ulta receipt, so I wasn't able to return it or exchange it. I don't know, do they do exchanges without a receipt? Even by looking at the pump, you can kind of see that the white is not mixed into the foundation properly. Like there's little spots of white all over and those spots end up on my face. I picked this up because I wanted to mix it with these two because these two are just a hair off of the shade that I feel like would match me. So I don't know, I gotta play around with these some more. Like I said earlier, my mind kind of changed as my skin and the seasons change and I just don't know what to feel anymore. <sighs> This one's such a bummer. Look at it. Look how weird the bottle looks. I tried to shake the shit out of it myself to kind of incorporate that white. They are very high coverage and they do have a matte finish, but if you're oily combination like I am sometimes, you may get some oiliness throughout the day. CoverGirl Vitalist Elixir with an SPF of 25. This is 625 buff beige. I love this. It is beautiful. It's medium to full coverage. You can definitely build it up to full coverage, but it doesn't look cakey. It looks like skin. It wears well throughout the day. I've worn this from the early morning until late at night. This shade is perfect for when I'm self-tanned. I love that it has a pump. I think it smells really nice. It has like a nice clean smell. Probably one of my favorite foundations right now. Wet n Wild Photo Focus in Soft Ivory and Soft Beige. These have interesting componentry. They come with a paddle, which I don't know, is all right, I guess. One thing I don't like is they dry up around the rim because the formula is very pigmented and high coverage it's almost paint like so I feel like it dries really fast not only on the face but around the rim of the bottle so if it does cake up around the bottle and you're going in and out that's what she said <laughs> Sometimes the hard chunks fall into the foundation, which I don't like. Because the foundation dries so fast, you have to work in sections and you have to work really quickly. And if you don't, your face will look cakey. I wouldn't recommend this for anybody that has dry skin. It's another case of my skin changed and it doesn't perform the same. Because when I first picked this up, I really did like it. Recently, I've tried to use it again and it doesn't give me that same feeling. I think I'm going to keep this for a little bit longer. If I don't reach for it more than like a handful of times in the next couple months, I will be getting rid of it. Oh my, this is old. This is the L'Oreal Magic Nude Liquid Powder Bare Skin Perfecting Makeup. I bought this because my sister-in-law was raving about it and I bought it from Winners for $7.99. Pretty sure they don't make this anymore. 
three days later. Well, hello everyone. Uh, we are here days later because not only did my camera cut out, but my dumbass deleted the clip following that clip, which went over two more foundations and it's nowhere to be found. So I'm gonna redo that right now. Thankfully, I hadn't thrown out all the stuff that I didn't want anymore. So it's still here. You can still insert this into the video. This is the Maybelline Dream Liquid Mousse. This used to be a ride or die. Do you know what else was a ride or die? The one that came in the little pot that would crumble everywhere when you would try to apply it with a brush, so you would have to apply it with your fingertips. I used to love that shit. I still loved it well into my YouTube gig here. Brought back a sense of nostalgia. Anyway, this was awesome. I mean, I don't know if they still make this, but if they do, it blends into a dream, no pun intended. I like that it has a pump. I'm pretty sure they have a fairly decent shade selection. This one is very expired and old, so I did end up tossing this. This is an e.l.f. foundation. I'm not sure which one it is. It doesn't say anywhere on the bottle. e.l.f. is very notorious for that. Either switching up their packaging all willy-nilly or not actually naming their products properly. I do know that it's in the shade Sand and that it's oil-free with an SPF of 15. This is not a foundation. This is more of like a tinted moisturizer with an SPF of 15. I don't like it. It barely covers anything on my face. It makes me feel really greasy and I wanted you guys to let me know. I know that e.l.f. has a new foundation called Lawless something and it is in this identical componentry and I'm wondering did they reformulate this or are they using the same formula and it's the same foundation because I was eyeing it at Walmart and I was also eyeing it online but if it's anything like this then I don't want it. So if any of you guys have tried the new e.l.f. Flawless foundation please let me know in the comments below because I am very intrigued by it but if it's anything like this I'm not going to bother because this this was shite, so I did toss this as well. All right, back to your regular scheduled programming. CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1. This has an SPF of 20. It's in the shade 925. Very expired. Definitely getting tossed, but this was a great formula. It had a primer, a concealer, and a foundation in one. I loved it. I think this was a repurchase. I am gonna toss this, but I may repurchase it in the near future. Got another e.l.f. This time it's the Acne Fighting Foundation with salicylic acid, witch hazel, camphor, tea tree oil, and aloe. I did not like this. It didn't have very good coverage. It had a funny smell, so I'm gonna toss this. I have two of the Koki Skin Perfect HD foundations. NW, 30W. I initially picked up 30W and then I got home and I applied it and I realized, yes, it is very nice and yellow toned, but it is just not, it's not looking right. I'm looking a little sick when I apply this. So I went back and I picked up NW and together look pretty good. Overall, Koki really needs to work on their shade selection because the formula is quite nice. It's really hard to get a good match. Other than that though, pretty good foundation. Um, it's a bit more fluid than other foundations and they do come with pumps which is very nice. I will definitely keep you posted on these. I'm gonna keep them. Oh my God, we have three more and we're done. I'm so excited. Two of the CYO Long Lasting Life Proof Foundations. CYO is by the brand Boots, which is uh, popular in the UK. We have some boot stuff here in Canada at Shoppers Drug Mart, but I actually picked these up in the States. You can only find these, I believe at Walgreens. I found these at Walgreens in Vegas. I have not really seen a lot of CYO at the Walgreens just over the border near my house. I picked these up in October of last year. I quite like them. I got 102 and 107. While I like these, I feel like the shades are all over the place. The foundation looks different in the bottle than it does on the skin for somebody who doesn't want to pick up like three different shades, you're gonna have a bit of a hard time shade matching yourself in the store. I think they only have 13 to 15 shades, which kind of sucks because it is a great foundation. It's an interesting formula. It's very lightweight, but it gives coverage, but it also makes my skin feel moisturized. I'm just so confused by it, but I really like it, so I'm definitely gonna repurchase it in the future. And I think this is made in France, which makes me feel really fancy. Anyway, I'm gonna keep both of these. Oh, and did I mention that these have pumps on them? Speaking of pumps, I should probably clean these off. Last but certainly not least, we've got the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte. I used to love this foundation. I don't know why I stopped using it, but I have a feeling this is 
Yes, this is a backup. Not only is the componentry very handy because it's a squeeze tube and you can get every last bit of product by squeezing it out and then you can cut the tube in half to get the remainder, but it's a great formula. It's a demi matte finish. I'd say medium to high coverage. Great for oily skin. I like to buff it into my face using a dense haired foundation brush. Perfect if you have giant pores or acne or oily skin. Pretty sure I've seen people with dry skin use this as well. I think I may have have stopped using it around the time that I was trying to not use products that were tested on animals. I'm not a cruelty-free channel, but I am trying to do my best. Because I've already paid for it and I already own it, I may as well use it. Something tells me that the majority of you have probably already tried this foundation because this was really hot when it first came out. I am gonna keep this and oh my god, we are done. So let me organize these again and then count them up and see how many foundations I got rid of. While organizing my piles here, I decided that I am gonna get rid of my NYX Total Control Drop Foundation in the shade Natural because I swatched it and it's just way too pink. Even when I'm self-tanned, it doesn't make any sense. Like I bought vanilla because I wasn't happy with this one. So I'm gonna toss this one as well. In total, I had 54 foundations. I'm getting rid of 26 and I'm keeping 28, which means that I'm getting rid of 48% of my foundations. That is pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. That's like almost half. I knew I was gonna do well, but I didn't think that I would do this well. So I'm gonna organize this stuff somewhere where I can see it and I'm gonna sadly toss all of this stuff out. I hope you guys enjoyed this declutter. Let me know in the comments, like I said earlier, what you guys think I should declutter next. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed. And I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.